Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. Now a lot of people keep asking me why I keep making videos debunking Dr. John Campbell. The reason is simple. He keeps making videos full of dangerous disinformation and Dr. John Campbell is more dangerous than a lot of disinformation spreaders because he was once a source of fairly good information, which means he's causing unnecessary stress to a lot of people who followed him early in the pandemic. And I know this because I have been contacted by some of them. His latest video about Swindon data, though, really takes the cake. He combines deception with stupidity to spread absurd disinformation about myocarditis and pericarditis. But he doesn't start with that. He starts with an apology. I'd like to apologise for the removal of yesterday's uh, video. I absolutely hate uh, having to remove videos. I'd much rather leave it open for public analysis, debate that over time I could be proved right or wrong. So my apologies. Now, this has nothing to do with the video, but it struck me as being rather bizarre. John seems to be saying that he didn't remove his previous video by choice but it was definitely removed by him and not by YouTube. If YouTube had an issue with the misinformation in the video, they should have removed it and issued him with a strike. But this hasn't happened. So either John is getting special treatment from YouTube or he didn't have to remove it and it's just some kind of attention-seeking exercise. If anyone has any ideas, please let me know in the comments. Anyway. Let's get on to the Swindon data. Um, so that's the website there. Check it out. Now, the answer, um, when Sean asked about the prevalence of uh, myocarditis and pericarditis in Swindon area over the past few years, and this is the uh, answer he got, which is really quite uh, interesting. Great Western Hospitals Foundation Trust, Freedom of Information Request. And we see... Uh, figures for 2019, now this is pericarditis, myocarditis and the total of inflammatory heart condition. So that's for 2019. 2020, it went up dramatically, both for uh, pericarditis are increased from that to that, and uh, myocarditis increased from that to that, total of over 12,000 inflammatory heart conditions. Uh, 2021, it went up again. And 2022, albeit the information only went up to the 27th of November 22, again, we see a pretty big increase. And this is the start of John's deception, because that was not the answer to the FOI request. It was only half the information. This is the total information. There is the table he provided for emergency department attendances, and the table he deliberately left out for inpatient spells. As you can see, there is a rather large difference between the numbers. For example, there are only 167 inpatient spells in 2022, but 24,624 emergency department attendances. Unless you're an idiot, this strongly suggests there has been some kind of mistake with at least one of the tables. And it's pretty clear which table has the mistakes in it because Sean also put the same freedom of information request to the Oxford University Hospital NHS Foundation Trust and got this information back. 2019, 512, 2020, 556, 2021, 699 and 2022, 614. Reasonably consistent with the second table from the Swindon data, but rather inconsistent with the first table that John chose to show. And if you're a fan of John's, I would love to hear your explanation for why John deliberately left this information out from his video. 
And there is now no question that the first table is totally wrong because the Great Western Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust contacted Sean and told him just that. And John has, in fact, made another video acknowledging this, which we will cover later in this video. The thing is, though, at the time I am recording this video, John still hasn't removed the video that he knows contains false data. And last time I checked, it was getting more views per hour than the video explaining that the information was wrong. But let's ignore for the moment the fact that John's whole video was based on incorrect data. Let's see what claims he makes about the data. Um, 2019 was a pre-pandemic year. There was no COVID-19 and no treatments or preventative measures for COVID-19 around that year. 2020, uh, it went up clearly quite dramatically, and this is a, a 3.8 fold increase. Now, the vaccines for COVID-19 were introduced in December 2020. Um, I think I had my first one in February, March, I think I probably had my, my first one. And then after that, we see that, um, not saying it's related, of course, but after that, we see that the cases of myocarditis increased. Now, I think we have to be quite clear about it. Um, there's a great increase from 3,151 on the baseline to 12,267 um, in the first year of the pandemic. And we can say unequivocally that this increase was not due to vaccination uh, because there wasn't any COVID vaccination in, in, uh, 20, uh, in 2020. So we know, it, we know it's not that, but we do see this increase. So the vaccinations were started in 2020. And then we noticed that after that, uh, in 2021, the increase was times six over the baseline. And we noticed that in 2022, the increase was times uh, 7.8, nearly eight times. In fact, by the time, if it was the whole year's data there that was included in 2022, that would be eight times over the baseline. So it's an awful lot of inflammatory heart disease in Swindon. And, and actually, uh, in 2022, even for the figures that we have here, that's actually 7.2% of the whole catchment area population for Swindon Hospital. So it's an incredibly lot of inflammatory heart disease. So we can say that this was not caused by vaccines. Uh, we can say that part of this we would expect was caused by COVID because we believe part of that was caused by COVID. We can say that part of the 22 figures was uh, caused by COVID, but we see it doesn't account for all of the cases we believe by any means. That means there was some other cause of the inflammatory heart disease in Swindon, in addition to COVID, in 21 and 22. So according to John, the increases in cases in 2020 is from COVID, but not all the cases in 2021 or 2022 could be from COVID. This could possibly be true if the case numbers in 2020 2021 and 2022 were similar, but as you can see from the table, they were massively higher in 2021 and 2022 compared with 2020. Of course, it's uh, relevant because the numbers are wrong anyway, but it shows the stupidity of his arguments. And there are more to come. A staggering uh amount of people with inflammatory heart disease in the Swindon area and we don't think it was caused by the wagon works in Swindon so we're probably looking at some other cause now the Great Western Hospital in Swindon where this was taken um, quite a big district general hospital 435 beds <clears throat> trust catchment area 340,000 people in the catchment area but the UK population is uh, 68 million plus nearly 69 um, so um, that's uh, times 202 for the population of the UK. So in other words, you have to multiply that by 202, 340,000 to get up to uh, the 68, 69 million. So that means if we were to extrapolate this number for 2022, it's a dangerous thing to do, of course, but if we were to extrapolate that up to the whole population of the UK by multiplying the number in Swindon by 202, 
that would actually give us 4.9 million cases of inflammatory heart disease in the UK in 2022. Now, for most people, the 4.2 million number would have been a massive red flag. In fact, a massive red flag with flashing lights and bells and whistles because it's pretty obvious that the number is wrong. But John just uncritically presents it in his video. Did he honestly think that everyone somehow missed 4.9 million cases of heart inflammation in a year? Apparently, he does. Now, before the data was released that proved beyond any doubt that John's numbers were wrong, I decided to do a quick sense check on the numbers by looking at the 2019 rates. Now, there are a number of studies looking at the base rate incidence of myocarditis and pericarditis. This is a table from one such study, which shows a number of estimates based on where the data is coming from. And I'll provide a link to the study in the video's description in case you want to peruse it yourselves. The highest rate is about 30 cases per 100,000 people per year. In contrast, the Swindon data for 2019 translates to 1,025 cases per 100,000 people per year, which is over 34 times the number of cases that it should be. How did John miss this obvious mistake? I would love for his fans to explain in the comments. And of course, his nonsense continues. Now, I did think that this 4.9 million cases of inflammatory heart disease, meriting a medical opinion, an emergency medical opinion in the UK sounded ludicrously high. But then when I thought about it, just thinking about me in my rather limited social circle, I've talked to a dozen people this year who've had symptoms of myocarditis and, myocarditis and pericarditis. The pain, uh, sometimes a sharp pain, sometimes a dull pain, the pain sometimes during exercise, the palpitations, the shortness of breath. Um, I, I've talked to a lot of people and I've thought, just a minute, that sounds like a, a heart-related pain. Given that we now know that the number sounds ludicrously high because it's wrong, you have to wonder whether John may be suffering from anti-vaxxer proximity syndrome. And for those of you who think he isn't an anti-vaxxer because he has had three doses of the vaccine, I define an anti-vaxxer as anyone who spreads vaccine misinformation. Their own vaccination status is irrelevant. And John, of course, finishes the video with his standard trope. This gives us a total of uh, 2,377 very rare cases of heart inflammation. But as we say, 10% um, of severe cases are reported and 2-4% um, to of less severe cases are reported. And there's other um, things we could have added to that list of severe events that are um, uh, not at liberty to report, unfortunately. Um, but from the Swindon data, um, if Swindon is typical of the UK, that would give 4.9 million, 4 million cases, which is really quite, um, quite a large amount. Extrapolation, of course, is always very dangerous, um, very dangerous to extrapolate in science. But that's based on these numbers from the Freedom of Information request. They are... We know these numbers here are for sure, that they're from the Freedom of Information request. And if the Swindon's population is anything like typical, that gives us um, 4.9 million potential cases of inflammatory heart disease in the UK in the year 2022 alone. And this merits uh, an explanation, which unfortunately has not been offered by the authorities. The explanation is, of course, that the data is false, and John should have realised this. I also found it curious that he says if Swindon is typical. He knows damn well that the data he presented wasn't typical because he also had access to the 
data from Oxford, which told a very different story. And he made it clear at the beginning of his video that he spoke to Sean on the phone. So Sean obviously would have told him about his other freedom of information requests. Interestingly, John also received three freedom of information requests for data regarding heart palpitations or reporting fast beating, fluttering or pounding heart. And John also chose not to share this data, which unsurprisingly didn't show any massive increases. But now John knows that his data was completely wrong and he has made a correction video. Well, sort of. Okay, so that's the sort of story so far. They're saying that the data from yesterday's video turns out to be completely wrong and they supply the, uh, the now corrected data. So let's look at that uh, briefly. Here's the corrected data, Great Western Hospitals. NHS Foundation Trust. Now this is the corrected data. Now if we look at the original data, for example this number here, it's now 344, was uh, 59,340. Uh, and this number here that was, uh, where well, you can see the numbers are just massively, massively uh, different. Um, now we notice a few things here. Um, basically we notice that pericarditis 2019 2020, 2021. Not really a lot of difference. So, for example, 74 cases in 2019, 74 cases in 2001. And up to November, uh, 60, only 67 cases in 2002. And we notice that the total numbers there are 344. But then further down, we're actually given the uh, inpatient discharge information. So these were patients that were uh, admitted, presumably, and then discharged. And then we see that um, of the patients who were admitted and then discharged, uh, 714 of the original 344 were uh, safely discharged by the looks of this data here. Uh, now, of course, um, they could have come from somewhere else, but 344 uh, emergency attendances, 714 actually admitted and then subsequently discharged. Um, they could have been referred from somewhere else. We don't know, but... It, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense on the face of it, but we only have limited data. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. John is literally using the table that he deliberately left out of his previous video because it made it obvious that his data was wrong to suggest that the corrected data may be wrong. Of course, the table shows no such thing. There are lots of potential reasons for the discrepancy. For instance, the emergency attendances, numbers, could be just the people who attended the emergency department but weren't actually admitted to hospital. This may not be the case, but it's one possible explanation. Another possible explanation is that not everyone who is admitted to hospital goes through the emergency department. We know, for instance, that GPs can refer patients to hospital. Uh, now, um, just, um, just briefly did a couple of checks on these things that they were talking about here. Uh, pivot tables and pivot charts so th these are the summary ones that were issued so i think we can assume that they mean that this is their uh, pivot uh, pivot uh, table pivot spreadsheet and they also talked about um uh, formula uh, formula errors which normally come up as a thing like this i'm surprised they didn't see that but but there you go uh, i nearly choked on my porridge when i saw this bit I really should stop watching YouTube videos while I'm eating my breakfast. For anyone who doesn't know, the table John thinks is a pivot table definitely isn't. And Excel spreadsheets let you know if a formula is invalid. They don't tell you if you have made a mistake in your calculations. It's a software package, not a mind reader. Given that the evidence is there for um, COVID pericarditis, the evidence is there for COVID, pericarditis, myocarditis, uh, inflammation, e e even some rare cases from vaccines. We're delighted to see that through the, the COVID waves where there was, where basically everyone got COVID, everyone was exposed to COVID. Um, it didn't seem to cause any increases in the people of Swindon. So that's excellent news. So I, I think what the government should do is have an investigation to see why, um, although myocarditis and pericarditis are recognised side effects, apparently 
there was no or minimal cases in uh, in Swindon. So John was willing to accept at face value the ridiculously high numbers he presented in his first video, but he's now trying to suggest in his usual nudge, nudge, wink, wink way that the corrected numbers may be wrong because they don't fit with his agenda. John expects there to be a massive increase in the numbers because he has convinced himself and his gullible followers that the rate of myocarditis and pericarditis following vaccination is super duper high. He is just unwilling to accept the truth that although myocarditis and pericarditis are definitely adverse events that can occur following vaccination, they are in fact rare. This is one of many studies that has looked at the incidence of myocarditis and pericarditis following vaccination. Overall, out of 18,811,912 people who received a vaccine, there were 295 cases of myocarditis following either Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. And this equates to 1.6 cases per 100,000 people who were vaccinated. And obviously it's a bit higher in younger people and particularly in younger men, but the Swindon data is for the whole population, not for a subgroup. And there were also some cases of myocarditis following the AstraZeneca vaccine in the study, but these weren't above the baseline rate, so I haven't included them in the calculation. As John previously mentioned, the catchment area for the Swindon Hospital covers 340,000 people. Let's assume that 300,000 of them were vaccinated. That would be about an extra five cases of myocarditis. Is anyone besides John surprised that we don't see a huge increase in the numbers in Swindon? Now, the study also looked at the incidence of myocarditis following a positive test for SARS-CoV-2, and it was a bit higher at just over three per 100,000 people. But remember, this is the rate for unvaccinated people. We know it is much lower if you are vaccinated. The large number of people that John claims have got COVID wouldn't all be unvaccinated. So again, there is no reason to think that there should be a huge increase in rates in Swindon. And just as a little aside, this study involved four Nordic countries. Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and Finland. Some of you may know that Denmark aspirates before giving COVID vaccination, but the other three countries don't. This study showed no difference in the incidence of myocarditis or pericarditis between the four countries. And I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions about that. So in summary, Dr. Campbell made a video which should have been clear to anyone who was thinking rationally was based on false information. He deliberately didn't show information in that video that made it clear his video was incorrect. And at the time that I am recording this video, he hasn't removed the video that contains the false information from YouTube. He has, however, done his best to suggest that the correct information is suspicious. But as I have shown, his arguments don't hold water. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in this video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, Double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And as I've said many a time, it doesn't have to be a nice comment. All comments work for the algorithm. But of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or bought little Cindy here a treat. I really appreciate your support. I will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.